All right, hey folks. So we've been multiplying and dividing rationals. Time to add and subtract. Hey, let's start with some simple fractions. Let's go back to elementary school here a little bit. If I want to take 3 sevenths plus 2 sevenths, to add fractions, I know I need to have a common denominator. These do. Hey, so what's 3 sevenths plus 2 sevenths? That would be 4 sevenths. So a reminder, when we're adding fractions, we add the numerators and leave the denominator the same as long as they have a common denominator. Okay, now let's take one-third plus one-fourth. These do not have a common denominator. What would the least common denominator be, the LCD? Well, what's the smallest number that 3 and 4 both go into? 12 is, right? So to get this to be a 12 here, I need to multiply that 3 by 4. But I can't just do it in the denominator. I need to do it in the numerator as well. That way we're really multiplying by something equivalent to 1. And over here, I would multiply by 3 over 3. This gives me 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths, which is now 7 twelfths. So what we do when we add to get a common denominator, we multiply by whatever factors we need to get to that LCD and then add. So let's start to step it up here a little bit. Let's throw some X's in there. 1 over X plus 3 over X. Do they have a common denominator? Yes, they do. It's X. So we add their numerators, and it's 4 over X. But now on this one, 1 over X squared plus 3 over X. These do not have a common denominator. Okay, our LCD has to have X squared go in it and X go in it. And the smallest expression that X squared and X go, both go into would be X squared. In this one, we just need to multiply this fraction by x over x. And it gives us 1 over x squared plus 3x over x squared. There's our common denominator. Add the numerators, 1 plus 3x, which we'll just write as 1 plus 3x over x squared. All right, let's continue to step it up. 3 over x plus 1 minus 2 over x. So 3 over x plus 1 minus 2 over x. So what is our LCD? Well, x plus 1 has to go into it, and x has to go into it. So it's just x plus 1 times x, or x, x plus 1, depending on the order that you need to write it. So we're going to multiply this by x over x. That gives me x times x plus 1. And this fraction, I need to multiply by x plus 1 over x plus 1. That gives me the same denominator, x, x plus 1. So now we have 3x over x, x plus 1 minus, I'm going to distribute that 2 on the top, 2x plus 2 over x, x plus 1. That way when I subtract, now I can combine like terms. They have a common denominator of x, x plus 1. Now let's subtract the numerators. 3x minus 2x is 1x. But then remember that we also need to subtract the 2. So it ends up being a minus 2. Think about it as distributing the negative through that numerator. So we end up with x minus 2 over x, x plus 1. Let's keep ramping it up. 2x over x minus 3 plus 3x over x minus 5. Okay, our LCD has to have an x minus 3, and it has to have an x minus 5. So this one, I'm going to have to multiply by x minus 5 over x minus 5. And let me throw parentheses around those. And this one I need to multiply by x minus 3 over x minus 3. All right, numerator here, 2x squared minus 10x. Over here, 3x squared minus 9x. Now we can add, 
and we have 5x squared. Negative 10x plus 9x is minus x over x minus 5, x minus 3. Now you might look at this one and say, can we factor an x out of the numerator? Sure, go for it. Um, I'm, I'm okay with this. If you want to factor the numerator as well, you can. Now if something were to cancel out when we factored this out, then we would want to do that, but nothing would cancel out here, so I think we're good. All right. Okay, so things are getting a little uh, more interesting here. Take a look at this, and I notice that I have a quadratic down here. So just like when we're multiplying and dividing, we want to factor to see what things cancel out. When we factor something down, it allows us to spot what that LCD is. So we need to do that on this one. Can I factor this denominator over here? And I get 4x squared plus 9x plus 2. Well, I don't think a 2x and a 2x is going to do it. But I do think a 4x and a 1x is going to do that. If I put the 2 here and the 1 there and add them both, now we have it. So, what's our LCD? Well, take a look at our first denominator. 4x plus 1 has to go into it. Now, take a look at our second denominator. 4x plus 1 has to go into it. Well, it already has it, so we don't need to put it again. But x plus 2 needs to go into it. So here's our LCD, which means this denominator needs the x plus 2. But this denominator doesn't need anything. It already has the LCD. So I'm going to FOIL in the numerator. What is that? Minus 4x plus 6x plus 2x. I'm going to switch the order on this denominator to match the other denominator. All right, now they have a common denominator. Let's add their numerators. So I see a 3x squared. A 2x and a 3x is 5x. A negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. And here is the LCD. Now remember that comment that I made on the last problem where you don't have to factor the numerator as long as something doesn't cancel out. But I'm curious as to this one, if I can factor, what happens if I try to factor this? Well, if I put a 2 there, and I make that a plus, and this a minus 1, that's 6x, minus 1x is 5x. It does factor, but what do you notice happens here? The x plus 2's cancel. And we end up with, sorry I ran out of the room, so I'm going to slide to the right here, 3x minus 1 over 4x plus 1 is our final simplified sum of these two rational expressions. So why did that end up happening where we could factor it and something would cancel out? Well, I want you to look back to this step right here when we were factoring. What do we have up here? We have a 3x plus 6. Can we factor that? Yeah, we can. Okay. That would factor to be... Let me get caught up here on the rest of the problem. Well, actually, that would factor to be 3 times x plus 2, wouldn't it? And then what ends up happening on this fraction on the right? Okay, I'm, so I'm ignoring this. I haven't done this yet. Okay, That's coming from getting the LCD. But when I factor that, notice the x plus 2's cancel, don't they? They cancel right away, so we just have 3x minus 4 over 4x plus 1 plus 3 over 4x plus 1. And their common denominator is 4x plus 1, which is what we saw right there. And then what do we get for a numerator? 3x minus 4 plus 3 
is 3x minus 1. And there we have it. So our lesson learned from this one is if you can simplify before getting a common denominator and adding, that's the way to go. It's going to end up being easier. Your LCD is going to be simpler, and it's going to save you some work at the end. So if you can factor the numerators as well and cancel something out, go for it. All right, two more examples, and I don't want to work through the entire problem, but let's just work on getting that LCD. Okay. So in this one, what is our LCD? Well, when I take a look at my first denominator, x plus 1 needs to go into it. x plus 3 needs to go into it. Now, when I look at the other denominator, x plus 1 squared needs to go into it. Do we have an x plus 1 squared in here? No, we have an x plus 1. But if I make that squared, now x plus 1 squared is in there. Okay. Is that okay with this over here? Sure. Does x plus 1 still go into this? Yes, it does. So our LCD is x plus 1 squared, x plus 3. So what does that mean for my multiplying? It means I need another x plus 1 down here. And on this side, I need the x plus 3s. So now we've got our common denominator, x plus 1 squared times x plus 3. And I can work with the numerators. All right, last one. All right. A lot going on here. So taking a look, x plus 1 squared needs to go into it. x plus 3 to the fourth needs to go into it. x plus 1 cubed needs to go into it. Well, we have an x plus 1 squared, but we need actually three of the x plus 1s. Now, does x plus 1 squared still go into this? Yes, there's still an x plus 1 times x plus 1. But we actually need three of the x plus 1s to make sure that our cubed is in there. x minus 4, we don't have one of those yet. Okay. x plus 3 squared. Do we already have x plus 3 up there squared? Yes, we do. We have x plus 3 to the fourth, which is x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3. So there is an x plus 3 squared. That's our LCD. So this fraction, what does it still need? It needs another x plus 1 to get to that x plus 1 cubed. It also needs the x minus 4. So this fraction needs x minus 4 times x plus 1 on the numerator denominator. What does this one need? It already has x plus 1 cubed. It already has the x minus 4. It has x plus 3 squared, and we need four of them. So we need another x plus 3 squared here. Okay. So what I would do then is I would write these uh, as the least common denominator. I would FOIL that, FOIL that, and then add the numerators and go from there. But at least we got this set up on that one for you. So that's adding and subtracting. Uh, make sure that you get your LCD. If it's subtracting, uh, subtraction, make sure that you're careful and you're distributing that negative all the way through. That's a very common mistake, but uh, shouldn't be too bad for us. As always, reach out and ask questions. If you have them, join the Zooms. We'll see you next time.